Good evening. Can you hear me? Hello, good evening, teacher. Hello, Byron. How are you? How about I am the rest? Good. Thank you. Thank you, Byron. How about the rest? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Okay. You Thank you. Me? Thank you, Rufino. Okay, let's begin. Okay, everybody, take a good look. Um, we're going to start now. Just let me get comfortable in my chair. So, um, as usual, first thing we're going to do is, well, I should call the attendance list, but there are only seven people connected. So, I should probably wait a little bit. I'm just going to wait a little bit to, to, to call your names uh, from the attendance list. Okay, uh, because apparently uh, not everybody is connected to the meeting. So um, just going to, to, to do it a bit differently here. So um, everybody, let's take a look. Oh, well, we can start, there are nine. Okay, let's do it. If you hear your name, please let me know. All right, uh, Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Present teacher. Welcome. Uh, Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Um, Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Is Carlos Roberto Dominguez here? Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Welcome. Uh, Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Present. Welcome. Elisa Arely López Campos. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Rufino Amílcar Hernández Linares. Presente. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. Present. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. All right. Um, one more time. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Good evening, President. Hello. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. 
Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Present teacher, I'm here. Welcome. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Okay. Um, I'm going to be doing this later on Good today. Evening, present. Who's, 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 okay. Madeline, Who? okay. Okay, hello, <laughs> Madeline, welcome. Good okay. evening, teacher. Carlos Who said Domingo. good evening? Carlos Dominguez. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. Anyone else? Okay. We have two chat entries here. Elizabeth del Carmen and Madeline Diana uh, are writing on the chat. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Um, everybody, take a look at this. This is uh, uh, Advanced English 1. And that's me, Ivan Donyan, at your service. Once again, welcome, everybody. It's session 11, okay? And uh, wait a second. Yeah, 11, tomorrow's uh, the 12th one. And today is September the 13th of 2023, okay? So um, let's do this. Let's begin. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to continue doing a few exercises based on relative clauses. If you remember, we have studied defining and non-defining relative clauses. And there are a few exercises that I want you to complete just for you to, you know, do some extra practice on this topic. So the first exercise goes like this. Complete the defining relative clauses with that, who, when, or where. All right. What about, okay, you have that, who, when, where. What about number one? Okay, we have a chat entry here. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno. Okay, Gabriela, welcome. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so what about number one? Number one, who can, who, who wants to try? Gabriel, I knew it. <laughs> uh, I want to try, okay. Sure, sure, it... thank you. It would be people who live in cities have more stress than people that live in small towns. Yeah, people who live in cities or that live in cities have more stress than people who or that live in small towns. Okay, so they're all defining relative clauses, by the way. Okay, uh, that is uh, great. What about number two? Thank you, Gabriel. What about number two? Who wants to try? Number two, remember, you just have to complete with that, who, when, or where. Rufina uh, Milgar. I, I mean, like to stay in, in hotels where there are lots of theater and restaurants nearby. Nearby, okay. Amy likes to stay nearby. in hotels where there are lots of theaters and restaurants nearby. Okay, that is correct. Thank you, Rufino. What about number three? Byron. Some city people have cottage by lakes where they can swim and relax during the summer season. That is correct. Okay, some people, some city people have cottages by lakes where they can swim and relax during the summer season. Very good. Thank you, Byron. Number four. Saul Arnulfo. Can I try? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, number four. Many office workers like to have lunch in a park where they can sit in the sun and enjoy the night the nature and let me see enjoy the nature what is all around them i don't know what is not is not one of the options the options are that who when or where as when when is all around them. Okay, um, 
So the first one is right. You have many office workers like to have lunch in a park where, okay, they can sit in the sun and enjoy the nature. So we're talking about the nature. The nature is not a person. It's kind of like a thing. So what is the relative pronoun that we use when you're talking about things? That. That, okay, you can use that. Also, which is not in the list of options, but it's possible. Enjoy the na nature which is all around them or the nature that is all around them. Okay, thank you, Saud. Number five, who wants to participate? Number five. I'm going to speak Spanish. Insisto, participemos. No nos durmamos. De acuerdo, participemos. Okay. Carlos Dominguez and then Gabriela Sequeira. Number five. Carlos Dominguez, this one is yours. Okay, teacher. Um, the city is better. It's better. Students. Sorry. It's better. It's mm -hmm. better for the student where? You're talking about students. So... Uh, it's where no no you're where is uh you use where when you're talking about a place but in this case you have uh, the city is better okay, for uh, students who who or that who mm -hmm. that went to war in the summer because it's the place where mm -hmm. the job market offer offered the most opportunities right Okay, yeah. Uh, offer the most opportunity. Thank yes. you, Carlos. Okay. okay. All right. The city is better for students uh, that or who want to work in the summer because it's the place where the job market offers the most opportunities. Okay. Thank you very much. Gabriela was raising her hand. Do you still want to participate, Gabriela? Gabriela okay. Sequeira? Yes. Okay. What about okay. number number six? Sorry, sorry. Please. Okay. People who live in towns where there are no movie theaters often rent movies. Yeah. People who live in towns where there are no movie theaters often rent movies. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That is correct. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody. Thanks for your participation. All right. There's another exercise that I would like you to do. Okay. A safe review on this. Now, take a look. Your turn. Are these sentences okay? Correct them and put commas where necessary. If the sentence is correct, you just tell me that the sentence is correct. We don't need to change anything. So you have the first one. Anna told me about her new job that she's enjoying very much. There is a problem here because the relative clause that she's enjoying very much is giving you extra information. Therefore, by the way, <laughs> made a mistake right there. I forgot to change the, the example. I apologize. As usual, I was doing this in the middle of the night. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, I know. Sorry about that. Okay, now this is this is the one. Okay, now I'm sure. Um, again, what are we going to do? Well, you have the first one. Anna told me about her new job that she's enjoying very much. So you have that she's enjoying very much is the relative clause. Because the relative clause is giving you extra information about Anna's job, you conclude that it's a non-defining relative clause. So you will need commas, as you can see here. And also, you need to change that for which, because in a non-defining relative clause, you can't use that. You can only use the relative pronoun that when the relative clause is defining. If it's non-defining, no, you can't use that, okay? Remember that. So what about number two? My office that is on the second floor is very small. What about this one? Is it okay or do you need to change anything? Gabriel Antonio. I guess we need uh, we need to change uh, the sentence. It mm -hmm. would be my office, what is on the second floor is very small. My office, again, please, my office. What is on the second floor is very small. Where is on the second floor? What is? 
What? What is on the second floor? Okay. Um, what is not a, a, a relative pronoun? So we don't use what? Or it can be which? Which is that's better. Okay. So my office, which is on the second floor, is very small. Okay. Now, um, a question, Gabriel. Will, would that be defining or non defining? Would you need commas or not? Yes, it would be defining. Defining, so no commas are needed. Oh, well, it's non-defining then. Non-defining, so we need commas. Yes. Okay, let's take a look. My office, comma, which is on the second floor, comma, is very small. Yeah, that's right, okay? When you say which is on the second floor, that's extra information. You can simply say my office is very small and people will understand what you mean. Thank you, Gabriel. What about number three? Everybody, take a look. The office that I'm using at the moment is very small. How about this one? Carlos. Okay, teacher. The office, comma, quiz, quiz. I'm using at the moment is very small. Okay. Are you sure? Oh, oh the office, comma, quiz. Uh, I I use him at the moment. Comma is very small. You sure? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, do we have a second opinion? Or do you agree with Carlos? Do we have a second opinion? Someone here? I guess Virginia? it's okay. Huh? Gabriel says it's okay. it's okay. All right, so we have two different opinions. Uh, Gabriel says this, this sentence is okay, and Carlos says that uh, we need commas because it's a non-defining relative clause. So um, let's take a look. It is okay. It is okay. Because the relative clause that I'm using at the moment is necessary, okay, for you to understand what office I'm talking about. If I only come and I say, the office is very small, you will ask me, what office are you talking about? I mean, what office? I don't know. So if I say, the office that I'm using at the moment is very small. So you say, ah, that office, okay, is very small. So uh, this is a defining relative clause because it gives you essential or defining information for you to understand the whole idea. Okay, what about number four? Uh, Sandra's father that used to be in the army now works for a TV company. How about this one? Who wants to try? Saul, I don't know if you want to participate or if your hand is up. Sorry, it was a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. So um, what about number four? Again, Sandra's father that used to be in the army now works for a, com for a TV company. Who wants to try? Vamos, no tengan miedo. Lo peor que puede pasar es que vamos a corregir si hay algún error. Y si corregimos, pues todos vamos a aprender. De los errores también se aprende. I promise to be very respectful. Okay, Rufino. Um, Sandra's, Sandra's father, comma, um, uh -huh. who used to be in the army now, comma, uh, works for a TV company, company. Very good, but the second comma is not in the right place. Help me. me. <laughs> And okay, you, you told me Sandra's father, comma, who used to be in the army, now works for a TV company. The second comma, you need to move it. Uh, move it. Uh, um, the, the army. I, I don't idea. No idea. I don't have idea. Okay, so, okay, Rufino is, 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 is right about the sentence. The, the only problem is the second comma. Who can help us with this? Where would you uh, put the second comma? Anybody can participate. Work, comma, for a TV company? 
Okay, um, not exactly. Let's see what Saul says about it. I guess it's after army. After army. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Rufino, and thank you, Saul. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you, Rufino and Saul. Uh, Sandra's father, comma, who used to be in the army, comma, now works for a TV company. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Okay, so uh, Rufino's version was 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 good. The only the only the only little problem was that uh, you placed the second comma after now. It was actually before now. So there you go. Very close. Okay, uh, thank you very much. What about number five? The doctor that examined me couldn't find anything wrong. So do you want to participate again? Yes. Okay. 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 I think that the doctor comma that examined me. Ex I don't know how to say. Examined. 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 Examined me couldn't find anything wrong. So the doctor, comma, that examined me couldn't find anything wrong. Is, is that your answer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That is. Okay. Uh, do we have a second opinion on this one? No. No. I guess it's okay. Uh, who's who said that? <laughs> Always raise your hands, please. Remember, because mm -hmm. otherwise I, I get lost. I, look, I I hear voices, but I, I wait. Who said that? Okay, Gabriel. Yes, it's okay. The doctor it's okay. Done. Okay. All right. Let's see. Who's right here? We're gonna see that in three, two, one. It's okay, actually. Okay. Uh, the the sentence contains a uh, defining relative clause. Yes, Saul. I don't know if we can change the word that for who. You we can. We can. Absolutely. You can say okay. the doctor who examined me couldn't find anything wrong, or the doc the doctor that examined me couldn't find anything wrong. It's uh it contains a defining relative clause. If you eliminate the clause, you will have the doctor couldn't find anything wrong. But then you will ask what doctor and, and who what are you talking about? I mean, what was the problem? So then you have to say the doctor that examined me or the doctor who examined me couldn't find anything wrong. Now we know what doctor or which doctor, okay, we're referring to. So the sentence is okay. It contains a defining relative clause. No commas are necessary. What about number six? The sun that is one of millions of stars in the universe provides us with heat and light. Carlos Dominguez. Uh, teacher, I have a question uh, only. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, number five, uh, um, number three, no, no, it's necessary comma. No, no changes Music are necessary. Comma. Okay, no. okay. Thank mm. you, teacher. Because because they contain defining relative clauses. You will use okay. commas only when you have non-defining relative clauses. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so um, Elizabeth, I believe, wanted to participate. Hi. Okay, I try. Okay. The song, comma, mm -hmm. which, which is on, which is one of millions of stars of the universe, comma, provides apps with, uh, with heat and light. Final answer? Yes, that's yeah. correct. <laughs> okay. The sun, comma, which is one of millions of stars in the universe, comma, provides us with heat and light. That's correct. Very good. Thank you, Elizabeth. It it contains a non-defining relative clause. Okay. The, the information, which is one of millions of stars in the universe, gives us only extra information about the sun. Okay. If you take it out, you just say, the sun provides us with heat and light. Okay. You will understand. You will not ask me, what sun? The sun, okay, <laughs> our sun. That's what we're talking about. So very good, everybody, very good. Thank you. Um, let's continue. Um, I guess we're gonna start with, uh, there's one more exercise, but I guess we're gonna do it tomorrow, okay? So, Let's do this. Okay, now we have uh, section 3.3. This is lesson objective 3.3. In this class, participants will learn vocabulary to talk about cities. Okay, that's the vocabulary for cities. That's, that's what we have today. 
Take a look at this. Uh, now we have this part, which is not in the manual. It appears in the um, in the platform. And uh, I'm sorry, this is the best image I could get. It. <laughs> uh, I apologize. I know that the resolution and quality is like really, really low, but uh, this is the best I could get. So um, take a look, describing a city. These words describe different features, different characteristics of a city. I don't know if you can read. Okay, it's it's it looks really blur, uh, blurry. Can you give a definition for each word or phrase? Uh, which features are most important to you when you're choosing a city to visit? Okay, so um, we're going to go over the vocabulary. Sorry, we're going to go over the vocabulary, and uh, if there are words that you don't understand, you can uh, you just let me know. Okay, and then I'll explain. So first part is architecture. You know, architecture. We're talking about uh the the structures the buildings okay that uh, you can find in a city okay so architecture is the characteristic of a city then you have cuisine do you know what cuisine refers to any idea if you if you know and you can tell me in english that would be great okay so um what is cuisine maybe it's like i'm sorry gabriel it's like cooking, I guess. Something. Yes, exactly. Okay, it has to do with food and cooking. Okay, correct. Uh, well, the thing is that a cuisine uh, varies uh, from country to country, sometimes from city to city or region to region. So uh, we have, for example, Salvadoran cuisine. What does Salvadoran cuisine include? Well, you know, all your typical Salvadoran food, pupusas, negados, torrejas, okay, uh, and all that food. Okay, so... All that is, is Salvadoran cuisine. If you talk about Italian cuisine, then you you, you mentioned pizza, uh, spaghetti, lasagna, okay, uh, ravioli, and all that stuff. If you talk about Chinese cuisine, then you talk you say chow mein, lo mein, um, wonton, okay, and all that, all that, okay. So that is cuisine, okay. It's uh, uh, basically the set of recipes and, and and cooking skills and foods related to a specific region, normally a country, okay, but it can also be uh, the cuisine of a specific uh, city or region within a country. For example, um, you know Mexican food, okay? So everybody likes Mexican food. Well, I like it, okay. To be honest, uh, I like I like Mexican food, but even inside of Mexico, uh, you will find different cuisines. For example, uh, one region of Mexico that's very very famous for its cuisine is Oaxaca. You know, Oaxacan food is very famous around the world. So that's a specific type of cuisine. So that's that's what we talk about. We we're talking about here. The next one is customs, okay? Do you know the meaning of customs? What are the customs? Any idea? The customs are traditions. That that's what it, they are. Traditions, okay. Customs and traditions. Then festivals. Well, uh, I don't think I need to explain this. You know what festivals are? Just pretty much the same spelling in Spanish. So you have historical sites, okay? You know historical sites like when you go to Paris, for example, okay? I say when you go to Paris like <laughs> like it's easy to go. No. Okay, but if you visit Paris one day, okay, you will see the historical sites. For example, there's the Eiffel Tower. Okay, that's a historical site. There's like uh, the Arc of Triumph, okay, also in France, okay, that's another historical site. If you go to Italy, okay, you will see the Colosseum or you will you will see the leaning tower of pisa okay those are historical sites if you go to england you can see uh what is the name of this structure that is uh like a circle of st stonehenge okay you'll see that those are historical sites okay so uh that's that's the idea then you have nightlife what is nightlife okay well it refers to all the activities that you can do in a specific place at night like uh, you go to clubs, for example, some people go to nightclubs, uh, bars, some people go to restaurants. Sometimes there are uh, theaters, okay, very, very famous theaters or museums, et cetera, et cetera. Things that people usually can do at night. That's what nightlife refers to. Then there is scenery, okay? So what's scenery? Scenery is like everything that you can see, particularly what is natural, okay? That's scenery. You know, parks, 
maybe uh, hills, mountains, okay? All that uh, is part of the scenery. And uh, shopping, which I think it's not necessary for me to explain, right? Shopping is what you can buy in that place. Uh, like, for example, if you uh, if they tell you about uh, El Salvador, right? And you say like, okay, can, can you tell me, uh, I don't know, a, a nice city or place in El Salvador where I can go and buy handcrafts? People will probably tell me, ah, oh, you can go to Ilovasco. Right in Ilovasco, you will find a lot of handcrafts. Okay, so it's a good place for shopping, handcrafts. All right, that's that's an idea right there. So that, that those that's the meaning of uh, the words: architecture, cuisine, customs, festival, historical sites, nightlife, scenery, and shopping. Okay, so um, just a question, a very quick question here, and if you want to answer, um, it, when, when you visit a different uh, city, okay. Uh, what it, what features or what characteristics from the list are most important to you when you're choosing a city to visit? If you want to participate, you may raise your hand, okay? I don't travel much, to be honest with you, so I, I, I'm not the best person to answer this, but maybe you travel a little bit more than me. In all likelihood, you do, <laughs> because I don't travel much. I only travel from my house to work and back so um question when you when you are choosing a city to visit what features or characteristics from this list are most important to you who wants to who wants to try i just want to know your opinion elizabeth del carmen i consider i consider the most important characteristics are this historia no historians Time? Historical history? sites. Historical sites. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. Good. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, Rafino. What is uh, what is or what are, in your opinion, uh, the most important uh, features to choose when you're choosing a, a city to visit? Uh, for me, it's uh, the cuisine. The cuisine. And custom. <laughs> cuisine and customs. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Because, cuisine and customs. All right. So. You like to eat when you, you know, go uh, traveling. Thank you, Rufina. Uh, Gabriela Sequeira, what about you? And then Saul. Well, the most important things when I visit other countries is, um, to me, is the, the cuisine because I consider myself a foodie. And the nightlife, too. Okay. Oh, and, of course, hotel sites. Okay, so cuisine, nightlife, and historical sites. Okay, sounds sounds great. Okay, yeah, cuisine is important. I I agree. <laughs> I eat a lot, so um, I may not look like it, but I eat a lot actually. I don't know where the food goes to. Uh, Saul Arnulfo, how about you? Yeah, if I had the opportunity to travel to another country, yeah, I would like to to know about the custom, the festival, for okay. example, Tomorrowland. Uh, to know different places, right? Okay. For example, the Tower Eiffel. The, the Eiffel Tower, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. All right, that sounds good. All right, thank you. Thank you, Saul. Everybody, thanks for your participation. So there's a, a little vocabulary right there. I don't know if you can read it, but if, because it looks really, really blurry. So um, let's, let me just write it here. We have architecture, cuisine, uh, customs, festivals, historical sites, uh, nightlife, uh, scenery, and shopping. Okay, so in case you could not see it, that's the list for you. Okay. So um, I think I'm going to send it to you via WhatsApp. It's much more effective. Okay, where's what's up? Um, here. Okay, there it is. All right. Um, let's continue. So, what makes a city? Okay, we have this uh, exercise three point four. What makes a city? Or section three point four. Are these features or characteristics of cities important to tourists? or to residents, 
put the words in the columns. Add ideas of your own if you want. Okay, so which of these characteristics are important to tourists? Which ones are important to residents? And which ones are important to both? I am going to give you two minutes. Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes so you can classify these words in the right categories. Remember, important to tourists, important to residents, and important to both. Okay. You know, remember the tourists are the people visiting, the residents are the people living there. Okay. For example, let's do the first one. You have climate. Do you think it's important to tourists, important to residents, or important to both? What would you say? In your opinion. I think that important to both. <laughs> Okay, Saul says it's important to both. And yeah, that's right. Okay, climate is definitely a factor to consider when you're visiting a place and also when you're choosing a place to live in. So yeah, so it's important to both. So I'm going to give you two minutes so you can individually classify all of these uh, features into the right categories. Important to tourists, important to residents, and important to both. Let's, let's begin. Okay, we'll check answers in a couple minutes. Teacher, sorry. Yes. Uh, Carlos, eh, fíjese que hay una tormenta eléctrica y me da un poco de miedo estar conectado con esto ahorita. Oh. Eh, entonces, se desconectaría entonces. Me da un poco de miedo por el celu con el celular, pero si, si no, aunque voy a estar conectado, pero sí me da un poco de miedo. Cualquier cosa, yo le, yo le aviso. Ok, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Ok, um, have, you, have you finished? Hello. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So um, take a look at this. We have, uh, again, are these features of cities more important to tourists or residents or to residents? Put the words in the columns and ideas of your own. So the first one is uh, climate. Okay. So climate is important to both. Okay, what about cost of living? What about cost of living? Elizabeth. The cost of, the cost of living is important to residents. Important to residents, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because they live there. So definitely the cost of living is important to them. Thank you. Uh, what about 
crime rate? What about crime rate? Rufino. Uh, crime or rights important to both. Important to both. Yeah, that's right. Definitely. Okay. Crime is, is a factor to consider whether you're visiting a place or living in it. Thank you. Uh, what about cuisine? It's important to tourists, to residents, or both? Carlos Dominguez. Important to tourists. Important to tourists. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I will say, yeah, uh, cuisine is important to tourists. Um, the answer given is actually important to both. Okay. Which includes the tourists, of course, right? Okay, I believe uh, cuisine is important, right? I mean, you have to like the food of the place you're living in also. But yeah, okay. but, but but also, but I agree with you. It is particularly important for the visitors, okay? So mm -hmm. you, you have a very strong point right there. Thank yeah. you. What okay. about uh, uh, green spaces? What about green spaces? It's important to tourists, to residents, or both? What do you think? If you want to participate, please raise your hand. Gabriela Alejandra, aceituno. It's important for, to both. Important to both. Yeah, that's right. Green spaces are important to both, whether you're living in the city or visiting it. Thank you. What about hotels? Saul Arnulfo, then Ana Cecilia, then Elisa, and then Gabriel. Okay, keep your hands up uh, until you have participated. Otherwise, I will forget. So, yeah, ya, la, ya la bajaron por ahí. Okay, Saul. Okay, I think that the hotels are very important to tourists. Important to tourists. Yeah, that's right. Ana Cecilia, the next one is yours. Job market. El mercado laboral. The job market. Job market important to residents. Important to residents. Yeah, of course, because you're living there, so you have to work. So it's important to residents. Very good. Uh, the next one, landmarks. The landmarks are the most important buildings uh, in the city, normally because they have historical uh, value or because they're very popular in general. So what about the landmarks? Okay, are they important to tourists, to residents, or both? Gabriel. I, I would say for both. Both. I agree with you, actually. I agree with you. The answer provided by the, the original material is that landmarks is, is mostly important to tourists. But if I have to be honest, I think it's important to both. I mean, it's nice when you're living in a place and then you see nice landmarks. Okay. It's like living in, in San Salvador without Salvador del Mundo, right? I mean, what would that be like? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, what about the next one? Neighborhoods. Ana Cecilia, I don't know if you want to participate or if your hand is just up. The neighbor, neighborhoods mm -hmm. important to residents. Important to residents, yes, absolutely. Neighborhoods are important to residents because you're going to live there in one of them. Thank you. Um, what about shopping? Okay, what about shopping? Saul? Yes, I think that for both, it's very important. It's important to both. Yeah, that's right. It's important to both. Good. And the last one, transportation system. What can you say? Who is the transportation system important to? Tourists? It is important to both. Too. Important to both, uh, Saul says. Okay, yeah, that's right. The transportation system is important to both. So we mostly agree on most of the answers. Okay, there are a few that uh, could belong to more than one category. Okay, as, as Gabriel and Carlos have pointed out. But yeah, in general, this is what we have, right? So those are the characteristics right there. We're going to do a listen exercise, everybody. Uh, that is the next part of uh, the exercises in the platform. So what makes a city, okay? That's uh, section 3.4, speaking up the sections. Remember, uh, remember that uh, you have to complete all the sections, you know, uh, or the subsections in each section of the platform. Uh, Right now, we should have completed up to section 3.2 that we were solving yesterday, if you remember. Now we have 3.3, uh, .3, which is exactly what we're looking at, and then 3.4. Everybody, make make sure you take a look at this video. Okay, there you have it. It's uh, 
the same vocabulary that I was showing to you. And uh, it includes also this exercise that we have just completed here. So what makes a city? Okay. So um, we're going to do this. What's the city like? Okay, it's a listening exercise. So take a look. Listen to Carlos and Vicky talk about San Francisco. Who seems to like the city better? Okay, so it's Carlos and Vicky. I want you to listen. We're going to listen to this twice or three times if necessary, probably three times. The first, the first time is just for exercise A. The second time we're going to do it uh, so you can complete exercise B. And the third time we're going to complete part three, which is basically what we have in the platform. So it's, it's, it's a triple exercise. So the first part is this, listen to Carlos and Vicky talk about San Francisco. Who seems to like the city better, Carlos or Vicky? So uh, please listen to it. And then in the end, tell me who has the most positive opinion, or I'm sorry, who has the more positive opinion about the city, Carlos or Vicky? Listen to Carlos and Vicky talk about San Francisco. Can you hear that? Yes, yes teacher. Yes, thank you, teacher. thank you, thank you, thank you. Just, just making sure. Who seems yeah, to like teacher. the city better? Hi, guys. Hi. Hiya. Thanks for agreeing to meet me here on such short notice. No problem. Well, listen, as I said to you on the phone, I'm doing a story for a magazine. I'm interviewing foreign students to get their impressions of different cities in America. Uh, well, this should only take about 10 minutes or so. Let's see. Uh, do you mind if I tape record our interview? Oh, no, not at all. Okay, then. Carlos, why don't we start with you? What do you think of San Francisco? How do you like it here so far? It's okay, I guess. Oh, you don't sound very enthusiastic. No, no, I like it. It's just that I've been so busy studying. I haven't had much time to explore the city. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, and when I have the time, well, it's so cloudy and foggy here, especially in the summer. I never thought I'd be wearing a sweater in July. Well, this is Northern California. Hey, maybe you should move south. I hear Los Angeles is warmer. Vicky? Oh, I love it here. I think this is a beautiful city. The rolling hills, the views of the bay. It's very romantic. Yeah. So, how do you guys spend your free time? Well, I'm studying architecture and I'm somewhat of a photographer. Really? Oh, I'm just an amateur. Anyway, I, I'm always taking pictures of the buildings in the city. You know, the Victorians, the modern skyscrapers downtown. There's such a variety of buildings in the city. The architecture is really great. I've also taken pictures of other landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge. It looks totally different when the weather changes. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, well, Vicky, it's your turn. What do you like to do? I'm a bit of a night person. There's always a new club or a film or a great outdoor cafe to check out with my friends. And we also like to explore the different neighborhoods. It's pretty easy thanks to BART. That's Bay Area Rapid Transit. Yeah, that's a great subway system. Anyway, yesterday we went to the Italian neighborhood, North Beach, to buy some pastries and have a cup of espresso. Today, I'm going down to the Mission District to get a burrito for lunch. Hey, sounds like you like to eat Mexican food. Yes, and actually, I like the Mission a lot. It's a Latino neighborhood. We don't have anything like that where I come from. Uh, well, that's about it. Any final comments? No, not really. I'd just like to say that this is a great place to live. I'm glad that I got a chance to study here. Okay, it's a long listening right there. Um, so uh, in the end, uh, who seems to like the city better, Carlos or Vicky? What do you think? If you, if you want to participate, uh, raise your hand. Who has like a more uh, positive impression of the city? Uh, Gabriel. Um, Vicky. Yeah, it is Vicky. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, it is Vicky, the one who has the more positive impression. Now, we're going to do exercise B and C, we can say here, okay. Uh, listen again, check the city features or the city characteristics, okay, that Carlos and Vicky mentioned. So it's climate, architecture, shopping, customs, hotels, job market, landmarks, and cuisine. 
And also, because this is a, it is kind of a long listening uh, file, uh, I want you to do exercise three, four, and five at the same time. So who likes to take pictures of different places? Is it Carlos or Vicky? Who is more like a night person? Carlos or Vicky? And who says that San Francisco is a great place to live? Carlos or Vicky? So two things to do now. I'm going to play it a second time. And you have to do two things. First, you have to check the characteristics that they mention. And then you have to uh, answer questions three, four, and five by choosing the name, uh, the correct name. All right. So I'm going to play the track a second time. And uh, here we go. Ah, before that, before we do that, and because I might forget, um, I'm just going to call some some names uh, from the attendance list. Elmer Mauricio Salas is Elmer online tonight. Okay, welcome, Present, Elmer. Teacher. Welcome, welcome. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika, welcome. I'm here. Thank you. Welcome, Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespin. Is Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespin online tonight? No. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Okay. Um. I'm calling attendance at the end of the class one more time. Okay, I'm, I'm going to play the track a second time. Everybody pay close attention. And then uh, I'm going to uh, ask you for the answers. Here we go. Listen to Carlos and Vicky talk about San Francisco. Who seems to like the city better? Hi, guys. Hi. Hiya. Thanks for agreeing to meet me here on such short notice. No problem. Well, listen, as I said to you on the phone, I'm doing a story for a magazine. I'm interviewing foreign students to get their impressions of different cities in America. Uh, well, this should only take about 10 minutes or so. Let's see. Uh, do you mind if I tape record our interview? Oh, no, not at all. Okay, then. Carlos, why don't we start with you? What do you think of San Francisco? How do you like it here so far? It's okay, I guess. Oh, you don't sound very enthusiastic. No, no, I like it. It's just that I've been so busy studying. I haven't had much time to explore the city. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, and when I have the time, well, it's so cloudy and foggy here, especially in the summer. I never thought I'd be wearing a sweater in July. Well, this is Northern California. Hey, maybe you should move south. I hear Los Angeles is warmer. Vicky? Oh, I love it here. I think this is a beautiful city. The rolling hills, the views of the bay, it's very romantic. Yeah. So, how do you guys spend your free time? Well, I'm studying architecture and I'm somewhat of a photographer. Really? Oh, I'm just an amateur. Anyway, I, I'm always taking pictures of the buildings in the city. You know, the Victorians, the modern skyscrapers downtown. There's such a variety of buildings in the city. The architecture is really great. I've also taken pictures of other landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge. It looks totally different when the weather changes. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, well, Vicky, it's your turn. What do you like to do? I'm a bit of a night person. There's always a new club or a film or a great outdoor cafe to check out with my friends. And we also like to explore the different neighborhoods. It's pretty easy thanks to BART. That's Bay Area Rapid Transit. Yeah, that's a great subway system. Anyway, yesterday we went to the Italian neighborhood, North Beach, to buy some pastries and have a cup of espresso. Today I'm going down to the Mission District to get a burrito for lunch. Hey, sounds like you like to eat Mexican food. Yes, and actually, I like the Mission a lot. It's a Latino neighborhood. We don't have anything like that where I come from. Uh, well, that's about it. Any final comments? No, not really. I'd just like to say that this is a great place to live. I'm glad that I got a chance to study here. Okay, uh, time for us to check answers. So um, what uh, city features do Carlos and Vicky mention in the audio file? Who wants to try, who wants to participate? They basically mentioned four. What are those? 
Saul. Mexico, I think. Mexico. Well, well, yeah, they talk about it, mostly the food, right? But but I'm talking about the features right here. Climate, architecture, shopping, customs, hotels, job market, landmarks, and cuisine. Which of these characteristics or features do Carlos and Vicky mention? Gabriel Antonio. I guess uh, they mentioned climate, architecture, landmarks, and cuisine. Climate, architecture, landmarks, and cuisine. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, those are the four that are mentioned. They talk about the, cl the climate, the architecture, the landmarks, and the cuisine. Thank you, Gabriel. All right, what about question number three? Who likes to take pictures of different places? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Who likes to take pictures? Okay, Gabriela Alejandra, aceituno. Carlos? Carlos, okay, let's check. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, it is Carlos. Okay, good. Thank you. What about number four? Who is more uh, like a night person? Who's more like a night person? Elisa Arely. It's Vicky. It's Vicky. All right, yeah, that's correct. It is Vicky. Thank you, Elisa. And number five, who says that San Francisco is a great place to live? Rufino Milkar. It's Vicky too. It's Vicky too. Yeah, that's right. That's Vicky. Thank you. Okay, that, that's that's correct. Now, those are the answers uh, to uh, exercise or section 3.5, which is the listening activity. So uh, you can listen to it. And then you have who likes the city better? Okay, you check Carlos or Ricky. Well, you know the answer. We just uh, did that. And after that, uh, listen again, type in the city features that Carlos and Vicky mentioned. Okay, you need to do that. You need to type it in right there. It's probably going to, yes, uh, Gabriel? Yes, I was about to talk about that part because uh -huh. actually I type uh, the four types and it shows us incorrect. I don't know okay. how. Let me, me see. Let's see. Let me check. I'm going to give you an answer very soon. It's loading. So. I don't know. I don't know if we need to, to use commas or just write the words. Let me check. Ta -da, ta -da. The thing is, <laughs> okay, here's the answer to it. I'm 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 accessing the the answers from the platform, and uh, if you got it wrong, then uh, this is this is the the answer that it will be take that will be taken as correct. Climate, architecture, landmarks nightlife and cuisine okay by the way um try to do it like this exactly with the commas and also include the period at the end if you don't include it include it i believe it will be taken as wrong okay it's climate architecture landmarks light nightlife and cuisine With or without the word end, just uh, write the comma and then the just the comma. Mm -hmm. If you if you copy it exactly like that, you you should get a correct answer. Climate, architecture. There's there's landmarks, uh, nightlife, and cuisine, which is uh, funny because nightlife is not one of the uh, let's say features in the list okay however it is it is it is mentioned okay that is correct it is mentioned but it's not in the list that's why it appears here but it is mentioned it's, it's actually vicky right it's the person who is more of a night person so nightlife is actually uh, one of those uh, features uh present in the listening part so um have you tried this if you try this i believe you will get it right can you just, can anybody uh, just confirm? Yes. Yes, it works. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, happy to hear that. 
Okay. Yeah, you know, it's this type of exercise normally when you need to type in the answer that there are usually problematic. Okay, because if you just change one little thing, okay, it will be taken as wrong. So but don't worry, that's that's why we're here, okay, to, to guide you through it. All right, so um, remember, uh, complete this. Uh, remember that tomorrow you should have completed the rest of uh, the section. So I want you to do this in your house, right? There's section 3.6, uh, which is the lesson objective. By the end of this session, participants will learn to use modifiers in the correct order. I need to go full screen. And then there's the order of modifiers. I want you to watch the video. You'll see Miss Jessica here explaining the topic. Okay, she does it very well and uh, providing examples and everything. After that, I want you to go to uh, the listening exercise, okay, which is listen to Maria and Ian talk about life in Sydney, who seems to enjoy living there more. Okay, so you have to choose one. And the rest is just multiple choice. So it's it's not really that expensive. It's it's good that this part in this part you don't have to type in your answers because that's usually what becomes problematic. And then finally, there's the reading exercise, uh, which is read the article and are these statements true or false? Again. It's just a multiple choice, so uh, it's one or the other, okay? So I want you to complete that. Remember that by tomorrow, okay, uh, this section is supposed to be complete. Tomorrow, we're just going to go through all uh, these exercises that we haven't been able to cover, and um, we'll finish the section, okay? But if you can finish it before, that's much, much better because, as you know, uh, by tomorrow, okay, uh, it, it has to be complete okay? because they send those... Uh, they send the data to 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 the authorities at Insaport, I believe. So uh, don't don't get delayed, okay? And if there are exercises that you haven't completed, please do them, okay? Because uh, it's it's important. It's part of the completion uh, percentage of uh, of your of this level, okay? If if there are exercises that you have not done, okay, that will be reflected in your completion rate. And uh, you don't want that to happen. Also, it's in the in, in the group, you know, <laughs> uh, the coordinators are saying like this person and this person, this person, right? It, uh, you need to complete this. So don't, don't be in the list, okay? Just uh, complete this. All right, everybody, uh, we're going to stop here. It's already 9 p.m. So, ah, sorry, before we go, um, attendance. Okay, just one more time. Is Miguel Arsenio online tonight? Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespin? No. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina. Okay. Everybody, thank you very much, and I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good night, teacher. Thank you. Good evening. Good night, bye -bye. teacher. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.